Uh, well, I'll start by asking, of course, you're sort of renowned for your quite intensive character study work, and I was wondering what you did to, to get into the head of Cecil Gaines. Uh, there, there was a number of things. Um, because it was based on a real character, Eugene Allen, inspired by, you know, I, I started to study uh, him and his photographs and his history, listening to tapes on him, then studying the dialect and trying to marry like his rhythms with the dialect of this particular character, which is Cecil, right? I started to... Uh, work with movement coach, I started uh, working with a butler coach to, to see about, to, to understand what it was like to be a butler and learn how to do service and and um, all that stuff. And, and then a dramaturg sort of gave me the scope of the history and I started to put it all together and get myself fit and that was it. I mean, given what he goes through, it'd be very easy to play this role quite theatrically, quite overstated, but he's very passive and he keeps a lot of his emotions in. Was it quite tough to, to kind of bring out that emotion in such a subtle way? It was uh, a great challenge, you know, because uh, I, I need to keep on in some ways like the mask of service, you know, and uh, but uh, you, you need to be able to follow me because it is coming through his eyes. So you need to be able to know what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking. So that was a challenge. I was hoping that people would be able to, to feel what I was thinking. You know, and uh, and uh, I think Lee was able to to structure it so that uh, so that you were able to see into my eyes and understand. And given your age, uh, you would have sort of seen the civil rights movement as a, as a child, mm -hmm. and that's almost what Cecil is is kind of taught how to respond to to politics. And I was just wondering if you were able to draw on your own sort of experiences in that regard. I think so. I mean, I I, I had like very distinct memories of like certain things, uh, King and Kennedy and. And about uh, the Panther movement and all those different things kind of played a part. And being bust, you know, as a, as a youth, as a kid, uh, helped to fill in like some of the some of the tapestry of it. And uh, and then and then the individuals that I met and I knew that were involved in that period in time, who had talked to me about it, really helped me a lot. And I read that uh, there were times when your performance made Lee Daniels cry. I was just wondering if that if that was true and, and if there were any what particular scene it was that that really got him. <laughs> It's, it's, it's strange because cause, cause he, he did cry a number of times at different times. You know, he, he's a really present filmmaker, so he could either be laughing or he could be crying or he could just be yelling out his thoughts. You know, um, and sometimes you go to a chair and you just be weeping uncontrollably. I'm trying to think. I think uh, it wasn't just the death of our child. It was like some of the scenes, too, when I was older. I think it reminded him of, like, uh, you know, because I played because I played till the 90s, I think it reminded him of some of the older people that he, that he knew and and the losses you know that they had had and the things they went through he w he would get overwhelmed by truth you know I was fortunate enough to interview David the Yellow Road last week oh, cool. and he was talking about how much he enjoyed and how amazing it was to have Oprah play his mother mm -hmm. so it must have been pretty cool having her play your wife um, she's amazing we had wanted to work together before we knew each other and this was a great opportunity and she's like so committed and I think she's so strong in the movie and I mean, th this film kind of builds up towards the, the Obama election. And for, for considering this is about somebody else's life, somebody else's experiences, was it quite strange to tie it all up with a, with a memories I imagine you know very well yourself and can remember very well? Yeah, I think, I think it is, you know. I mean, it was, it was a great way to, 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 to move the film because you can see, you watch this, this guy who came from just a step above being a slave. He was like a sharecropper all the way to the White House and then finally to the, to the current president to, to Barack Obama and I think it's an overwhelming journey and uh, I remember what it was like when he was elected and the feelings that I had and, 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 and put that on top of all the other things that I'd experienced in the movie and was carrying with me. It was, it was quite overwhelming, you know. Uh, and then getting to, to the White House at the end and then being that old cranky guy but, you know, who still gets to go meet the president was a great honor. Uh, my final question is, I read that you were sort of working on a Louis Armstrong uh, uh -huh. screenplay. I was wondering how that's coming on, because that, that's, that's something I'd really love to see. And would oh, you be great. playing the, the lead as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there'll be a few few different incarnations, younger guys, younger, younger Louis, but uh, uh, it's coming along great. Actually, we're debating about whether we're going to start it at the beginning of next year. We're going to start pre-production, so it looks like it's going to move forward. Oh, brilliant. Can't wait. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks thank so you. much.